to order. Uh, roll call, we've got everybody here this evening. Additions to the agenda, we've got numbers 15, 16, 17, and 18 under products, number three under business, and number one under personnel. Is that it? And we need to uh, delete our number one under business. Uh, Michelle is unable to be here tonight. She's presenting the bill at 6 o'clock. She's unable to be here. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to adopt the agenda with the changes. Motion to death. Second. Motion to correction. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Motion carries. District 741 is proud of Cole Whaler, grade 12, for earning his 100th career wrestling medal. Seniors Brittany Hemish and Brittany Young for being crowned the Sweet Fest King, or Queen and King, respectively. Gymnast Caitlin Morozic, grade 9, and Milena Morozic, grade 12, for earning all conference honors in the West, Cent West Central Conference. Gymnast Heather Arnold, grade 9, for earning honorable mention in the West Central Conference. Senior Dominic Plattow for his first place finish in the Section 5A Wrestling Tournament and qualifying for the State Tournament. Jacob Heimerman for earning Section 6 AA Girls Basketball Coach of the Year. The following students for receiving subsection Superior State Superior ratings at the uh, Vocal Solo and Ensemble Contest. Seniors Josh Bungham, John Dorff, Megan Ludwig, Austin McAdams, and Trey Stanger. Juniors Rachel Ampey, Alyssa Carlson, Samantha Eikhoff, Jackie Keller, Amelia Molly, Rachel McLeod, and Natasha Mead. Sophomores, Joey Christensen, Elizabeth Clausen, Mitchell Flora, Kari Heft, Corbin Hoekstra, Chance Holmes, Brianna Kemper, Emma Mogart, Allison Pepping, John Ruprecht, Eugene Schrader, and Nathan Schultz. Freshman, Anna Mogard, Mia Schrader, Lexi Skuglin, and Tierra Sievertson. Following students for receiving the subsection Superior State Excellent Ratings at the Vocal Solo and Ensemble Contest. Seniors Jessica Solom and Trista Thompson. Juniors Kellen Anderson, Erica Schlungen, Katie Schwalbe, Dylan Steineman, and Ramona Shelton. The sophomores Landry Hacklander, Amanda Hansel, Brianna Lang, and Brianna Sang. Freshman Taylor Berg, Vicki Clausen, and Allie Sang. The following students for receiving subsection excellent ratings at the vocal solo and ensemble contest. Senior Connor Hacklander, juniors Nicole Bennett, Maggie Gilmore, Mariana Huerta, Alex Lee, Hannah Rooney, Brittany Schlangen, Jacob Waltz, and Leah Wander. The sophomores Don Anderson, Genevieve Delano, Marissa Matson, Kate Remley, George Rose, Jackie Solom, and Holly Stang. Freshmen, Brianne Addison, Ben Fredericks, Trevor Mead, Shelby Rue, and Sage Steven. Matthew Anderson, uh, grade 12, for receiving subsection superior ratings at the vocal solo and ensemble contest. Chance Holmes, grade 10, for receiving best of sight at the vocal solo and ensemble contest. Amelia Malling, grade 11, and Eugene Trader, grade 10, for tying for best of sight at the vocal solo and ensemble contest. Seniors Dominic Plattow and Jeremy Schultz for receiving the Lions Youth Service Award for February 2012. Senior Dominic Plattow for his first place finish at the 2012 State Wrestling Tournament. Ryan Christman, grade 10, Michael Ludwig, grade 12, Allison Pepping, grade 10, and Travis Stern, grade 10, for their second place finish in the Models and Sculptures category at Deutsch Fest 2012. Joe Nelson, grade 9, for a second place finish in the MAPS category at Deutsch Fest 2012. <coughs> Kenny Olson, grade 10, for a second place finish at the Solo Song category at Deutsch Fest 2012. Mia Schrader, grade 9, for her first place finish in the Solo Song category at Deutsch Fest 2012. I received no uh, public comment request. Uh, is anybody here for public comment? Okay, we'll move on to item 7, which is to approve and correct the minutes from the February 28, 2012 regular board meeting. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion by Dave to approve. Second. And second by Lou. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify the same aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 
uh, onto the consent agenda. We've got the coaching assignments for the spring. Does anybody want to? Discussion on that, or any other? We're still looking for a seventh grade softball coach. It's been posted to Germany and in the paper, and uh, having a tough time, a tough time finding anyone. So if you know anybody out there that would like to do some seventh grade softball, we have that next. I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda as is. A motion by Mark. Second. And second by Dave. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, right. same sign. The motion carries. Uh, moving on to number two under business review budget reduction list. Okay, the administration and I have put together a list of uh, proposed budget reductions that have been impacted on something like this. Uh, we were given the directive for. Uh, range of 2 to 240. Um, so I'm just going to walk through this and answer any questions that you may have at this time. Uh, I'm not asking the board to uh, go ahead and maintain, uh, take any action on this this evening. Uh, we did have four retirements, which was uh, very beneficial. Uh, those four retirements were saved 169000 uh, I did take off the severance pay because we wanted to pay severance to four people. So we've got a total reduction of 112,000 there. At the middle school, high school, six classes, uh, reducing those by three. We'll save the district 15-7. 1.5 hours of teacher time, save the district 12. Uh, one hour paid by Carl Perkins. What that is, is uh, currently Doug Milloway, the West Central Ed Director, is uh, doing all the Carl Perkins. He's looking for somebody to do the paperwork for him. And we have an individual who do that, and he would pay an hour a day for that person, so that hour turns out to be a little over sixty-four hundred dollars. Uh, online classes, uh, registration process has been complete, and uh, we've got a lot less kids signing up for online classes, so we can save ten thousand dollars there. Uh, one pair of professional at the middle school, high school is twelve six. The supply budget. Uh, Cut that from $78 per pupil unit to $75, and that uh, saved the district $3,200. So we've got a net savings of $60,000 at the middle school, high school. The elementary, uh, of course, it's in combination, all the retirements are at the elementary, too. But uh, one pair of professional, 12 six. Supply budget, the same thing. And then savings in career increments. Uh, a couple of the staff members that retired were, would have received uh, career increments in the following year. But, uh, will be retiring, so the district will save about $6,000 there. Uh, District-wide, uh, sat down and went through Downey's budget, and uh, we had some areas that were probably over-budgeted, and uh, we turned 30000 out of that budget. Uh, the paperwork, turned that uh, by 1000 District office supplies, 500 The capital budget was $110,000 uh, for uh, ordering curriculum. We uh, put that back at 100,000, so we can save 10 there, and then staff development 5,000. For total saving 46.5, and a grand total of 240.533. The 30,000 on the building and grounds. What? It's mainly was in the fuel. Yeah, That's fuel for this next <coughs> year. You're thinking? Or this well, year? we increased it. I think too much. And we put it back to a normal year. Oh, okay. In each building, it was about, I mean, you had 10 in each building here, so there was 20 of it, and then we took some supplies and put it in. And, and the six, six classes, um, we're reducing three of the six classes. What were, what are they going to be all consist of? Well, six classes are some of these, they're high school contract where they teach five. Yep, yep, one yep. Record. Which, which, I mean, what? Program is being eliminated or decreased or what? You want to speak to it now or who's going to do it in oh. court? No, so okay. it's going to do it now. Um, what actually, through registration, the six hour classes actually fall respective. We have, we will have a couple math classes that will be at 30 in the high school, um, and we'll have a German class that will be at 30 with the reduction. 
Um, but the other, the other piece is with registration, we didn't have over 10 kids sign up in some of our business math classes. <coughs> so the reduction is within those classes. Um, the one thing that I guess since, um, that I was hoping to look at this year, but this year isn't the year, was adding a, a semester class for our sixth graders that involved that um, above the line, the bullying curriculum piece, which obviously this isn't the year to do that. But for the most part, with registration and where numbers fell, it, it fell in line with the reductions fall in line with those. So, and we're able to um, do the ESL with for the elementary. $10,000 for online classes, is that, was that something that was in the budget for this year, last year? Yep, it was, we actually spent more than what was in the budget this year, just because we had more kids pick up on the online classes. Okay. Um, I think it was right around 28000 I believe. And with registration, preliminary registration, mind you, looking at, um, it only came out to be about 11000 this year is what kids right now are signed up for. Knowing that may change some when they actually get their schedule and they have to start putting in classes, I think it's reasonable that we, we could eliminate about 10,000 there. And that's just students choosing to stay here versus go out of the building. And that number I could be by the end of May, I would have a definite number on that because we'll be done with the actual period scheduling of students. And I do have, and Todd, you may want to pass that down now because I was just going to, I do have a tentative schedule. This is definitely a draft form. Um, and I will have actual student number counts in, in it by the next meeting, but this is the classes, the tentative class list for the high school and middle school. So if you have questions during the week, you can certainly give me a call. But those are the classes right now that we have 10 or more students signed up to take. Um, and it did fall within the budget cut room that we were at. Okay, so more than happy to answer questions as the week goes. Or, and I can have specific numbers after this week because I think I'll be working with it some more. How about the paraprofessionals in each building? How, how would that fit into our plans? We've, we did a workload analysis with the West Central Ed. And so we're kind of we're evaluating based on that recommendation. And, we're and the secondary building it is going to cut into um, class time for our students. Right, our workload analysis did not show that we necessarily were over, but I think it is something I will be able to pick up because of the six-hour class drop. It gives me more teacher duty time which then will free up my paras that are serving as supervisors will be able to come back into the classroom. So I believe it will work out to be okay. okay. And that's the that trickle down effect, the duty hours. Also within ours, we, we will be sharing Natalie with Ricori again. And then um, it would be Elise who does our work, our special ed work, work program. Would be, and she works with the Carl Perkins already to some extent. And then Eden Valley has approached us, not for this year, but for next year, in possibly sharing a science hour as well. So for, because of the new science standard, they're going to run short. 
how have you got two news big and folks divided up on history? Okay, the, the double lines means by semester. So Fuchs teaches, okay, your, your seventh, two of the seventh grade classes, and then um, Evasagi teaches the third seventh grade class, and then we have Fuchs teaching two of the ninth grade classes, and he has the high school discipline hour, which does count as a class, and then if you look down at Canoe's Faith, he picks up the other ninth grade history class. And the three tenth grade histories, and then the world history elective. And he has one and a half. And actually, I may have to. It should just be two. <coughs> when Jackie and I were last playing, one of those is dropped out. He's got one, two, three, four. Five. One of those world histories shouldn't be there when we were playing with student schedules. So take out one of those world histories. They're just semester classes. So you add two of them together. And we have a board in my office that has it. So I can put that one deleted off the computer. Does that answer your question, Bob? Kind of. So we had a range at our last meeting of two to two. Is it was a two to two? Two to two. Okay. So I think we're just discussing this tonight mm -hmm. and yep. acting next meeting. Is that yep. correct? Mm -hmm. And we don't have to cut everything on this list, no. correct? I mean, we have a little bit of wiggle room. Yep. These facts. Just uh, met with the administration, and this is what the list that we came up with. Okay. And you guys can, you know, have conversations with myself, the principals, and yeah, you're not, I'm not asking you to act on this to see if you can pull that up. Is there any way that we can get uh, for it, uh, breakdowns of how many kids are in the class? Yes, that's what I told kids? you. After um, Jackie and I play with it this week, I will have those. Any of the 
the summary events or the no. things that they're going to use for or anything like that? No. Uh, motion by Taylor to approve. Second. And the second by the vote. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. And we added number one in personnel. And that's review and consider approval of extending Stephanie Sartwell's general leave of absence through April 9th, 2012. This is the second time uh, we've extended this one, but uh, Stephanie came in with a doctor's slip and uh, having some difficulties recovering. So uh, it looks like this is the latest doctor's slip that she'll be able to return after the night without any restrictions. And we're going to approve it. So a motion by Mark. Second. And a second by Dave. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify the same aye. 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 For the same sign. Motion carries. All right, uh, information reports. Mr. Orlando. All right. Um, well, first of all, we completed our first round of. MCA testing for students in grades three through five, and uh, really pretty pleased with the results that we got. We on some of the students that took the test, we got the results that same day. Whereas last year, if we took it in April, we didn't get the results until the end of September. So what we've done is we're working with Don Canole, who is uh, kind of the brains behind the, the technical side of it. Uh, we met with teachers yesterday and we we're showing them how to, through the MDE website, you can design assignments for students based on their deficiency of the last test they took. And parents will also have access to that and we're going to be putting a letter together and going through that. And some of the teachers have already put the assignments in there. And uh, so it's, it's been a, a good process for us. During conferences, each student who took the MCA math test, uh, we had a, a fairly detailed printout that they went over with the parents, and so it was really an eye opener for some families, and, and it, and it um, good and you know and concerning, but it, it gives us an opportunity to, to uh, aim our instruction towards those deficiencies, and so our next round of math testing will be in April. Uh, the later part of April, and then uh, hopefully we'll see some more improvements. And then those students who don't pass it, who don't meet or exceed uh, the second time, we'll, we'll take it again in May. So it's really totally different than, than what it has been in the past. We'll still do the paper pencil reading uh, in September and April, and then uh, that will probably be computerized next year also. So it's really going in that direction. Um, we, I, I wrote a grant with uh, a Reading Corps, and that is, it's, uh, it's a program throughout the United States, but there's a Minnesota Reading Corps, and you can write a grant to uh, get a full-time reading literacy tutor in your school for grades kindergarten through third. And a couple weeks ago, I got the, the confirmation that we were approved for that, and so really we get a what it is is we basically we get a full-time person in our school next year and we don't have to pay for that person. And so what I need to do now, they're really tight on how, how we do things and so for the next month or so I need to recruit. They want people from you know the community. Uh, some of their the, the people they like to have apply are, um, are you know, college students who are maybe taking a year off uh, retired persons, uh, military persons, anybody who um, would like to dedicate that time. And what that person gets paid, they get paid $500 every two weeks from the Minnesota Reading Corps. And then if you fulfill a full year, then you get a stipend for $5,500 that if you're a college student goes 
towards your tuition or paying off student loans or if you're a grandparent or a parent and your child is in school or your grandchild, you can take that $5,500 and give it to your child or grandchild and they can use it for college. So it's really a, a neat process. That person will work with students in uh, grades kindergarten through third grade one-on-one -on -one for a certain period of time and it will be the students who are kind of in between receiving title services and maybe just a, just a touch behind. And, and so it's kind of giving those students a boost. And so we're excited about that. We have to uh, uh, get that person hired before the end of the school year. And really what they do is I recruit people through, you know, tonight and, and advertising and things like that. And then they go through the reading core. They go to like a regional job interview, a screening process, and they screen people out, and then they send them to us, and then we would we would interview that person. So, if you know of anybody who you know in one of the categories that I mentioned, we certainly will be trying to steer as many people that direction as we can. And uh, so we're excited about that. Um, we had uh, kindergarten roundup. And we had 84 students on our schedule. Uh, we had seven no-shows, seven that are gonna, at this point, hold their child back one year. One is homeschooling. Uh, two are going to attend uh, somewhere else, and, and one of them have moved, they moved already. So as of right now, we're at uh, about 67 to 68 students some of the no-shows, we've already got confirmation that they're going to be coming, but they just didn't, didn't come to uh, kindergarten roundup. I think this number is pretty, 67 would probably be pretty typical for us to get into the 70s for our, our kindergarten class once fall comes around. If people moving in, we may have missed somebody on the census. Um, some of the old may decide to send their child if they, you know, maybe they, they want some preschool screening and maybe they decide. And so that's that's where we are with that right now. Any questions? Good. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Um, Lori. Okay. We had our middle school midwinter activity day and that was uh, a good activity for all involved. Um, we also had our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders take the math test. And very similar, what I thought was a turnaround from last year, and even saw it in my son and his friend who's an eighth grader, and as you walk around, walk around the eighth grade or the cafeteria, kids were talking about what they got and what they needed to work on, because, and they cared. You know, they wanted, if they made the needs and exceeds, they were really happy, and if they were just kind of, if they wanted to do better, so they were very encouraged and excited to be able to take it again. You know, so that immediate feedback was a huge um, part of the whole program. <coughs> the math teachers were pleased also with where they saw the kids falling, with the number they saw that went into the needs and exceeds, with where they're at in their curriculum at this point in the year, because of there are certain things that they haven't actually hit yet with having a month before testing and those areas that they saw that they needed to do some remediation, they, they're they planning for that and they feel they'll have to help those students do better that next time around and that will be in April. So that was good. Um, our high school schedule, you had the Dutch Fest, again the kids went and kind of blew people out of the water so I'm really, I was very, very proud of our German students that went on that. Our instructional coaches for our in-service day, uh, they kind of took hold of Mary Leindecker and Teresa Bogey, uh, took our staff through the non-English language standards, and we broke the staff up into mostly departments, and they started their own professional mini pronets, and not only worked through their own curriculum, but took the English language standards that now the state is requiring as of 2013, that non-English core classes will need to implant these standards. Is the departments took those standards, found areas where they fit, and that they would would be able to teach and support those English standards, 
and through the meet once a month. And through that time, their objective is to implant those standards and actually teach a lesson and have a buddy teacher watch the lesson with those standards implanted and then discuss what they're finding with having to, you know, with implanting the English standards, et cetera. So um, we're starting our mini pronets and they took off and, and all was well and they had lots of fun in the process sharing some different items. There was lots of um, laughs and, and professional um, sharing of them on during the workshop. So um, with that, that's any questions that you might all keep bringing um, added schedule information as we move through the next month or so to you. Thanks, Lori. Matt, to the other. I'll give you the, my uh, most recent brochure, but you know, sure. Then here's some that's come out that's been out recently. You notice on the front we're starting to use QR codes for people with smartphones. To, uh, you can scan our QR code to bring you right to our online registration page. We're going to start using them more for videos of some classes and things like that. Um, oh, and by the way, I'll take corrections. We just had our advisory council meeting, so I'll kind of include some of that stuff. So take a report too. Um, <coughs> our new Ed Center is um, up and running. We've actually had a few meetings there. Uh, we just had our advisory council meeting there too. So on Tuesday nights, if you ever want to stop in and see that, that's where our adult basic ed is going on at the old Head Start building. So it's all remodeled. Our computer lab is in and functioning. And, and uh, we can have daytime classes there now, summer summer classes. Um, really opens up a lot for us. So we're excited about that. That uh, would be a real asset for us. Um, Reminder, talent showcase is this Sunday at 5.30 in the auditorium. So there's a lot of new acts and our community um, was very talented in many different areas. Um, our BNC TV, we're taping our fourth episode next week. If you look at the district YouTube channel, we do have Dominic State Champ match online posted. So you can watch his actual online match. Um, we have quite a few new stories we're working on for the, the next episode of BNC TV. Uh, our summer brochure will be coming out the third week in April, and uh, our concerts in the park, they're all booked, and many new activities there too. So, any questions? Okay, thanks. Thanks. Okay, Max, I can go <coughs> Yeah, we had a pretty busy um, month of March, anyways, uh, <coughs> and the end of February with uh, March's music in our um, schools month. We had over 300 students sing the national anthem in a school song prior to our last home basketball game. That was the second year in a row that we've done that. Um, both times uh, referees <coughs> commented they have not seen that done anywhere else, but I really thought that was neat. So we had um, all the 4th through 12th grade, I believe, um, choir and music students sang the national anthem again in our school song. Um, at that same basketball game, we had a coaches versus cancer event, raised over a thousand dollars for the fight against cancer. Um, we're in the midst right now of starting spring practices. Um, another thing new that we're going to try to do this year, just because we value the lifelong um, opportunities, the learning that activities provide for students to promote those activities, we're going to uh, put together a multimedia presentation of um, like the past calendar year of um, sports and different activities and show that during the fun of the Sunday and kind of honor the athletes and students and teams. Um, that way, um, I'll be sending an email to Lou and Dave uh, in April once we get the spring sports started off and under the game season, we'll um, schedule an activities committee meeting. Um, kind of two of the main um, items on that agenda. We would like to review our activities handbook and just kind of go over that, that and the policies and um, what's been shaping up with that. And then we're going to uh, attempt again to get the baseball committee to come to give us an update on where they're at on the grandstand project. And those are main um, items. So that's what's going on. Any questions for me? Thank you, Max. Uh, facility report. Mark? The first half, I think. You, you can take it. <laughs> you were there in the first half. Oh, the first half. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we basically what we started off with is our seven year plan, our five year plan, like we usually do, and just kind of go through what is going on right now with, with uh, the different um, 
uh, programs that we're putting in right now with um, the uh, facilities. Um, some of the things that we had talked about also was um, some of the different computer programs and our computer labs that we're going to be also looking at. And I think uh, Dave has alluded to some of that stuff. One thing I thought was kind of neat that they're also looking at is um, the iPads, uh, putting, I think it was 15 in each one of the schools uh, or each building, which is really, really cool um, and would open up a whole different um, avenue of teaching for the kids and stuff like that. But um, that's, you know, pretty much what happened in the first part of the, the meeting. And I think uh, we had talked about a few other items that weren't on the on the five-year, uh, redoing the high school locker rooms, repainting them. And then there was some concern about the road between the vocational building and uh, north of that, potholes, taking care of that. And I think we talked about paving around the district garage with some hints on it. Why did you get that in? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And otherwise, that would just went through the like Mark said, through the five years. Okay. Uh, teacher negotiations. Well, we're getting closer. Um, I think we have uh, uh, some sort of agreement with the, the teachers right now. They're going to be talking about it amongst the MPA and see wants if that's something that they um, would support. And then come back to the main board here for, for discussion and, and go from there. So I guess that's where we're at right now with the teachers' negotiations. It's a tough battle, just like anything else. So, um, but, you know, I think we all realize, you know, at the end of the day that, you know, there isn't that much money out there for anybody. Um, and we, you know, but still people have to, you know, continue living and, and so on and so forth. So, when, when both groups come away not happy with the situation, then you know that probably isn't too bad. But, so that's kind of where we're at with that. Thank you. Okay, district wide staff development depth. Well, <clears throat> uh, the district wide staff development meeting was on March 8th. I was not able to, ten, to attend, and neither was Todd, but Amy Flanders was the um, chairperson that they achieved me some notes on because I as I requested and she said it was a pretty short meeting that uh, there wasn't um, no no new requests for money that's all I did they think um, and they had discussed surveying all of the staff to get nominations for the support staff um, that award that they give their teacher they asked to want for telephone we have words I don't know I don't yeah. know those. huh yeah, it's got a different name for it, but it's just an opportunity um, for all the school districts to spotlight someone who does an outstanding job in their district, and this one is um, for the support staff. And then they will discuss plans um, for the April 9th snow makeup day, and they also said that they invited Max to be at the next step development. Apparently there was some quite some conversation about um, staff development money for coaches, what, what's available and what's not. And then the, the district wide is, it, money breaks down into elementary, high school, and then a separate district wide, and you guys have less than two bucks. Okay, let's go. Uh, is there to Adam here yet? Oh, I'd just like to say that the, the new building is awesome and had the chance to tour that tonight and taking a class there tomorrow night so sign up okay. uh bob or gretchen meet and confer yeah we met tonight uh, i think i can say we pretty much finalized the calendar it's being touched up uh, before the next meeting uh, we'll email the board members the final copy to be voted on the next meeting did you go two years ahead again on a tentative one? Did you go two years ahead on a tentative one? No, we didn't because uh, we, we talked about it because we changed some of the tentative ones that we had last year and we talked about, or at least I brought it up, why do a tentative one if we're going to change it because people will hang on to it for okay. 
uh, you know, vacations and so on. So and there we, are some major changes in the conference, how we're doing the conferences, so if it doesn't work out, yeah. it's kind of silly to spend time doing another year off. I think it's a pretty good calendar. There's some adjustment with the uh, high school conferences and elementary kind of meeting in the middle. Okay. Uh, Dave Kearns, continuing yet? I wasn't able to make that. I was able to make that tonight, and uh, um, we probably had about 50 uh, request sheets in there that we got sorted. Um, basically, had a little bit of a discussion about the, uh, the technology credits, which is still kind of up in the air. Uh, also, had a discussion on the mental health. Okay, and then Todd's admin report. Uh, we met yesterday. Uh, we also met over the new abilities to get the uh, building over there, which is kind of a nice job with the rebounding over there. Uh, went through the board agenda. We did not have any fundraisers or website requests. Uh, I reminded uh, the admin of the Doghouse News articles. Um, the MCA spent waiver. We must submit that between February 27th and March 23rd. Uh, the allegations keep them coming in. Uh, we also have to create a uh, third reading uh, efficiency plan. The uh, end of the workshop next week. Coming up soon, but uh, we'll get that completed. Uh, had some discussions on the budget reductions. Uh, discussed the meet your county easement. Uh, I'll be out Thursday and Friday attending the NSA conference. Uh, Army Reserve Center, we got the deed back uh, yesterday uh, from Sturridge County. It's all recorded. So we overnighted that to Yolanda yesterday. She should have received that today. And she's going to send a copy of that to the Department of Ed. Uh, got an email this afternoon from that Richard in Chicago. Oh, yep. And uh, he also cc'd the guy in uh, St. Paul. And once he receives a copy of the report of deed, then uh, the guy from St. Paul will bring over the keys and plans and drawings and everything that should be good for. So hopefully we'll have that for the next couple weeks. Um, information for packets, uh, the enrollment for down one. Uh, first grader went back to Crystal. We gave we gained the third grader back and we lost a tenth grader to homeschooling. Also in there you have uh, the Haas newsletter and an invitation to the National Honor Society, which is a meeting we had that permit at least twenty fifth of buggies. Uh, all board members are welcome to attend that. Just fill that out and get that to Lori on the spot here for you. Uh, dates, uh, Monday the 19th, the uh, West Central Ed Board meeting at 7 o'clock in Halloween. Dave, is that you or who? Uh, you know, do you want to go with the one time you mentioned that once? Yeah. I'm about that, so go. Oh, okay. Yeah. They might go with the one. Okay. Yeah. As an alternate, that way. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. And now we know both the other guys just didn't want to put in there. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday the 21st is a collaborative meeting at the museum at 1 o'clock, correction. Also have a key quality meeting at 10 o'clock in the elementary library. Thursday, 22nd, district-wide technology, 7 o'clock in the morning in the high school conference room. Friday the 23rd is the quarter. Monday the 26th is quarter break day. No school for kids. Uh, and delete, we are not meeting again. On the meet and confer with the calendar, we've got that pretty much ready to go. We're just going to email that out as Bob said. And our next board meeting is on the 27th, uh, back here at 8 o'clock. And that's all I've got. Okay, and before we adjourn, Bob is going to update us on the status of the superintendent search. Then yeah. we talk to 21 applicants now. Okay. We've got 21 applicants. Uh, we have three teams. We've got the board search committee, which is Lou, Dev, and I. There's a staff team and a community team. 
Uh, the staff and the community had their first meeting last night. The board search committee is going to meet tomorrow to do the first run through, through the packets. We're going to use the uh, 100 point system in Painesville Area Schools hiring guidelines. All three groups will narrow their field to eight. Greg Vandell then will do a preliminary review for general qualifications and then we'll meet with Greg and the leaders of the two other groups to narrow to a set of sem semi-finalists by March 23rd. By March 28th, Greg will do a detailed credentials check of the semi-finalists and meet with the groups again, or the two leaders and the board search committee to identify finalists and we're looking uh, to have the finalists ID by April 4th and the interviews on April 18th. Any questions? How many semi-finalists and finalists are you? Did you guys identify that? Or well, we're thinking of like five finalists. So. We're breaking it down to eight and then down to five. Mm -hmm. Each group will do their eight independently yep. and then we'll, and then we'll see what we'll put them all together and see which. Okay. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Did you do that? That's part of the consent agenda. Okay. Um, nothing else? Meetings adjourned.